Hello guys, this is going to be another new video from my site, this time again in English, you know, one of these exceptions I talked about. <laughs> and I brought us a really, really fine match right there. It's going to be a Hodinoshone mirror, and that is going to be between two people who actually know to play those, uh, who play that sieve <laughs> in comparison to myself. But, well, just, just to give you a short introduction, what this game is and how it happened basically we have the spring cup the uc spring cup from the united um uec spring cup there we go <laughs> from the united empires community server and we had all the big names in there basically and this is if i'm not mistaken the quarterfinals because one of those guys later went on to play against kaiser klein and there's another whole story about that but i'm not going to go too into deep to that if you're interested in that story then just check out len lens uh, YouTube. I'm just here for this matchup because I love, of course, Hodna Shone. And I remember I watched this game, but not actively. I had it on my second screen and was just, I was just doing something else. So I don't remember all the things that happened. What I do remember is that it was a great game and that I was absolutely crazy what happened. And especially it was something that you don't always see, in my opinion, um, when watching this kind of a mirror. So we're just going to take a quick look. Well, Look, we're just going to watch the entire game <laughs> and take a deeper look at what the other players are doing here. I already see that my scrolling speed is way off because I'm not as fast. I'm actually a snail when it comes to scroll speed. Yeah, ah, maybe increase it for myself as well just to kind of get used to it. Oh, there we go, much, much better, easy on the eye as well. And yeah, there we go. Let's just start the whole thing. On the one side, we've got Charger by Lucas L, and uh, Red Mask by Kinesi, of course. So those guys are the Red Mask. If I'm not mistaken, that's good. That, that is a Batman reference. But I'm not that deep into my uh, into DC, to be honest. Short pause in between. Both those players are probably going to go for Water, as I assume. Yep, yeah, because Water play is evidently the best play for Horton and Shoney to start with because it's just so easy and so uh, neat and so comfortable for them to go on water. If that happens, so they both were so lucky that Doc's actually built from the start. Maybe they, they tried to do it again, but you know the problems that I sometimes have are that the Doc, when you start to build it, the Doc Wayne just stands there and says, no, I don't care what you want from me, I want to do it. And we actually just had a really good treasure, first one, um, just compare here, yeah, a small wood treasure, if I, a small wood treasure if I see that correctly. And usually what I would do is, I would actually go on to wood with four villages, uh, with six villages, because then you can kind of produce those back to back, but I think Kinesi has his own place down right there. Kinesi in general known for extremely defensive, well thought out strategies, and water is his second home basically if you've ever seen him play portuguese in the water map then you know what i'm talking about walls walls and if i forgot something then it's probably walls <laughs> so we have all of that out there lucas on the other side i haven't seen him play on the show that much to be honest there the house goes up just in time and perfectly timed right there from lucas i really like that because now we can just send in what is probably going to be Three villages, I assume. Yeah, land deck, interesting. No no water cards, so he might not be too heavily focused on getting water after this initial part. Oh, he don't. I mean, as far as I know, uh, Holden and Shoney don't have a card like Schooners that makes the boats cheap and enables them to water room a bit heavier. But yeah. So how many boats do we have right now? Uh, two boats out and Kinesi getting for a fourth one so basically the opening that we suggest as well Toby and I here we have one boat he's a bit oh Lucas is a bit slower there don't know why though maybe because Kinesi got a treasure and he didn't oh yeah another treasure going up 95 xp for Kinesi interesting yeah that might just um, help him with the next few shipments, especially because, of course, those boats also help you with XP. So I don't think that you're going to be waiting for your third shipment a lot longer than if you build a trading post. But after that, it kind of falls off if you don't do anything about your experience curve. 
Luke is also getting 30 XP to both of his players, really focused on getting treasures on this map. About this map, by the way, we have three, three different <laughs> trading routes. Two in water on each side behind the players, one in the middle. And we also have a lot of those guys, salt mines. If you don't know those, those are new to the Divinity Expedition by the African DLC. Basically, a whole lot of coin, but it also gathers slow as hell. Yes, torps included. If you build torps on those things, they're just going to be choked to death by the getaway. So it's not great. Let's let's put it that way. So having water and one, two, yeah, and one, two. So four whales on the entire map. Not great, not terrible either, I'd say. We are at three minutes now, and Kinesi is not close to aging up. Lucas is neither, but they both queue in the villager because you need to do that. And then what you usually do is you go up with the fast stage. But I'm interested in seeing if they are actually going to do that. Because they do know that the other player is also going up with water. And I don't know if they are you know if they're gonna fight it out on land here or if there's gonna be a big water play from either of these players. If there is, I'm suspecting it's gonna be Kinesi, to be honest. But I don't know. And you see that Lucas is actually one one villager behind i don't think he wants to finish that one yeah yeah there we go age up with the messenger and can you see with the chief oh my god <laughs> that is that is cheeky <laughs> all right and now again i'm in the bad position i can't really tell you what what car the chief is but i will look it up in a second or we'll find out i'll make sure that we see it when when the stuff comes out so when when we'll actually see what what shipment that one is going to grant Kinesi, but I that is that is what I thought about because you see Luke is going to be up here, no problems at all. Kinesi, he's going to take one and a half minutes, so basically three times the age of time of of Lucas. And now, Lucas also building a trading post. Interesting idea to just keep, as I said, keep his XP curve up, and just overall be a bit quicker when it comes to shipments. What is going to be his first shipment, anyways? five bills all right yeah he's housed as well ah, house is being built that is something i really like about hot and shoney i think those houses built almost as quick or just as quick as a normal house but support more population and population space wise when you compare how much population they support and how much would they cost they are more efficient than a normal house which i do like about those things kinesi is producing more ships all right it's water is going stronger and let's look at his deck he has actually fish market with him 25 percent and get rid of all of those things water ceremony oh that that could be actually game deciding if he ever gets to play that out oh, also water deck that is just good uh, interesting interesting mirror here because what we're going to see are probably going to be two absolutely different strategies luke is going for more oh that is a good idea luke is going for even more Trading post, uh, trading route control, basically getting the entire middle one, also fortifying this one with the war hut, and he's building canoes. He's going to contest the water from Kinesi, and I would really like to see that Kinesi now in H2. And we forgot to watch what H up he got with that. Damn it! <laughs> can still find out somehow. <laughs> Interesting idea. Just shots, shoots them. Fire. Oh, yeah. Now I'm just, I'm, I'm going to look it up and I'm going to put it right here. So just a picture of the age up. So you guys know what I was talking about when I said uh, Kinesi is going up with the chief. I'm sorry, I can't always remember, even if it's my main sieve. <laughs> uh, but I'm just sometimes getting confused because the only thing that I have in mind for the chief is actually um, what treasure is that? 215 food if he gets managed manages to get that that could be extremely strong for him as well Kinesi now getting going for trade galleons he also oh that is a smart play what he got is basically the backwards trading posts so they both are two trading posts but Kinesi already has it upgraded or as yeah he has it upgraded Lucas what the one for Lucas is also upgrading right now so both players are working on their XP income I see two houses here. The next house is going up for Kinesi. And Kinesi is continuously producing water and villages. 
So he's not even thinking about... Oh my god, that is strong. He's not even... He, he doesn't even have a single military unit except for his explorer and the colonial gunslinger. So he's just basically trust... <laughs> he just trusts in God that this whole thing won't mess uh, his, his eco plan up. Um, he's gathering that gold. Oh, and he only got gold with his fishing boats, so using those guys so he does not have to build one of those uh, annoying <laughs> tribal marketplaces so that is a strong play from Knizia right there Luke is preparing for aggression right now he has to because I'm pretty sure that he realizes that against Kinesi is probably not in the lead economically speaking because against Kinesi usually are not in the lead <laughs> when it comes to eco because if Anybody knows greed that is Kinesi in this situation. And he's actually building a tribal marketplace now because he does need the extra coin income. But he's also going heavily, heavily on food. That is another problem. He, he, his hunts are a bit far off. He can take that hunt up there. He can take the hunt up there. But then he's kind of out of hunts. Only a single, uh, a single dock right here. And that is all that fuses water boom. So... If Lucas is able to contest his... Yeah, we're going up with the messenger. Now he uses it for a fast age up, so it's going to be up before 8 minutes. And look at that economy. 37 villages and still an age up at 8 minutes. That is... That is extremely good. And that is why... This sieve is... I, I just wanted to say that the Hodenshun are in a very good spot, but I actually believe that they might be kind of busted to some extent. To some extent, I don't say overly busted, but just a bit too good, if you get my meaning. And here the push comes in. And now Lucas, of course, has to watch out because if he can get that war hut up, down before it actually starts to work, ah, he won't be able to do that. Kinesi is already training and uh, skirms. And who, for those of you who don't know, Elite Forest Prowlers, those are one of the best skirms in the game because they get extra range at some point also have good attack values in h3 already and just the overall amazing units in my opinion and you can buff them up via the town uh, via the uh, community plaza so you actually get a lot get to do a lot of work with them so don't forget about that now it's really on lucas to punish kinesi for going so incredibly greedy he does not he did not use his ships actually to push further into the water of Lucas, uh, to, in Kinesi's water. Now Kinesi is actually going aggressive here. One war hut down, more cav on the way. Does he have a stable? Yes, thank God, because stables are important. It's hard to get them out if you full on rush at the enemy, but if you see that, that can be quite useful. And actually, Lucas might see just the, the dock here, might be able to deny further. Oh, see that. <laughs> He actually got away with the units in the shipping boat, in the fishing boat. That is also a strategy that we see on that kind of level sometimes, and it always makes me makes me cheer up because I just like the idea of <laughs> a fishing boat rescuing your entire army in the first and uh, the last second before it gets slaughtered. And what do we hear? Oh, actually, Kennedy built more than one raft, and we have an exchange here. So he's actually not just trying to deny the water. From Lucas, but he's trying to to uh, basically take it over completely, as I see that with that investment over there, and uh, one canoe trying to slip through. I don't think that is going to happen. At the same time, we see H3 units coming out for for Kinesi at this point. Where is his villager eco? Just get okay there. A few. How many do we have? Here? I might ask. 16, 13 in here, so 23 villages. He's denying houses, houses, and more houses, which is a good play. You can do that against Hodden Ashoni because the houses have more HP, but they also give 15 population, so that means you decrease the pop limit even further by killing a house of a Hodden Ashoni player. And you see, those units that Kinesi is sending in, those are basically just, he, he has to kind of build a mass. And he's just barely holding on here with, uh, well, barely holding on is wrong words, he still has a strong eco. But a lot of it is idle right now. We see only around 25 villages of his 51 are working. 12 are idle. And 10 of them are in the town center. So he's just dishing out damage as much as he can. Trying to deny or deny. Trying to slow down the attack from Lucas. And this might be a bad trade for Lucas. Actually. 
Let's see. Well, if, if he can get the damage out with the Anus, they have to counter the Elite Musket Riders, otherwise they are going to slaughter his cavalry. The Cav from Kinesis is of course going down. Oh, and there he gets a hit out. That is good because the Anus are now going to be able to kind of... Yes, one entire Cav unit is going down. Good for him. And the problem is the Anus are really, really horrible offensive skirm unit because they uh, do have a decent range and a really decent attack speed but their attack animation is as bad as the one from longbows and their range is not as good so you can kind of do it you, you can do the math right can you see flat to the sides of the map rebuilding infrastructure where he needs it three to <laughs> three actually three uh, houses over there at the same time lucas still being not really pressured on this side but definitely limited which is a good play from Kinesi, in my opinion, really strong. But I, it's a bit of a weird position for him to be in, because he can't really get units up without them being slaughtered by Lucas. We have a lot of cavalry for Lucas right now. The TC is probably going down if we don't see any meaningful shipments here. And we do see eight forest powers, which is a good one. But he also needs to keep up the anti-cav numbers, otherwise Kinesi might get slaughtered here. Oh, and there, that's a good catch. Look at that. That's going to be a slaughter. Because the units are all slow, so he's, he's, lose, he's going to lose all those units. Yeah. Oh, except the last one. But still super strong on this side. The Kev still focusing the TC because there's a lot of villagers in there. And now, oh, wait, wait, wait. Are we going to see it? Is that <laughs> the war canoe? Is it going to be the best draft, the last rescue for, for the troops of Kinesi at this point? Yeah, look at it. The entire mass here going in there. Village is going in the canoes as well. Now he just needs to find a way to, to get away quick enough before it gets downed. Because I also saw an entire army in one of those boats being deleted in another game a few days back. So it can be quite difficult. But look at that. <laughs> He's boat hopping now. <laughs> and actually, but let's get back to the situation right here. Luke is being able to completely clean up the entire continent basically. So Kinesi is not really present there. And oh my god. <laughs> what are we seeing here? Kinesi actually migrating to the small island in the back and saying, nope, I'm out of here. I still got a decent eco. Although Lucas' economy is probably better. Oh god. And he, he kind of fighting guerrilla war here, right? With with war canoes to take care of his lead force prowlers if they ever get into a spicy situation. Uh, <laughs> long houses on the sides. At really doing a great job um, at not being dead without a TC and without meaningful presence on the main continent. They're still Lucas now kind of needs to figure out what he got, what he wants to do, right? Because there are villages over there, uh, there are villages over there. Over here we have the houses, and the forest prowlers can just hop into the boats whenever there is danger. And oh god, he did it again. <laughs> that is. That is so kinesi, that is an abstract tactic, but uh, absolutely fantastic for this map, probably. Because he went as greedy as he did. Now he has a TC up. If he builds a few docks here, he can actually take over water even better. And from that, I, I, we still have Lucas in age 2 alright? But villager-wise, we are not looking too bad. The only problem is that he's running out of shipments, but Kinesi has access to all of these great age reach shipments as well. Finally, some village is dying. Not, not that I'm for that at all, but the point is, he was a bit cheeky with getting our, all of his villages out every time, right? So at least he's doing that. Oh, there's still one left. Um, Lucas. That, that, that one is still there, but Kinesi doesn't seem to mind either. That person is just gathering. Yeah, and see, against land units, if they get too close, it's still a bit dangerous, but... Oh, yeah, that... <laughs> More elite forest prowlers. And another TC on the other side from Kinesi. Are you freaking kidding me? I mean, there are no resources. That is, is that a hunt? No, that is not a hunt. That is just a villager treasure on that one. And four stray goats on that one. So he basically does not have any resources on these islands other than wood. But... He, I, I, I don't think that he needs any other resources to um, boom just with a water boom, in my opinion. Help you. There, the last anti-water goes down for Lucas. 
And this might be hard to hold on water. Oh, hard to hold water is basically that has been taken over by Kinesi, while the main <laughs> main island has been taken over by, by Lucas. And I don't know if he actually sees any of this. He is. At least he spotted that one over there, but I'm pretty sure he does not know about that one over here. <laughs> and now farms are being built. It's that far into the game. We get, we, 50 minutes and we're seeing farms being put out. Because, well, of course, Kinesi does no other way to, to get any food except for the water here and here and here. And I think he needs those on the coin. Did he send fish market through already? Oh, that's Lucas' stack. Lucas aging now, finally. That is good for him, in my opinion. Really important as well. He did not send that through yet. Oh, and there he's slow. There's another unit. But now Kinesi is slowly regaining, or trying to regain, some military produ uh, production on the mainland. Uh, and this game is absolutely... I remember just hearing the caster, who was uh, Lenlen, I think, going crazy about it. Or, or is it a robot? I'm not too sure anymore. I'm sorry about that. But just if you want to see the original one, so basically what was casted, I'm not 100% sure of life, but the first official cast, because they're always allowed to cast it first, UEC. Um, that, then just take a look at that. It was absolutely amazing. And now, <laughs> Kinesi actually looking like a boom. Uh, looking like he's going to be able to boom out of three TCs <laughs> and the ma and wait, how many does he have here? And two docks. Where's the second dock? Yeah, over here. So he's actually. Oh my god, that is that is so cheeky. He's actually cheeky enough to not just take the water, but also to, <laughs> to boom right behind the base of Lucas. So he is really going for it. He wants those whales as well. So he, he's going to take the most out of his water equal as much as he can. Oh, that is an interesting idea. We see Lucas going for H4. And why does he go for H4? Well, of course, the cannons, because those cannons might enable him to not just efficiently siege down Kinesis water, uh, Kinesis water, Kinesis land presence again, but it's also going to enable him to efficiently deal with um, the boats, the boats that are going around from the land. So those those light cannons that Holland is showing here are probably the best cannons overall in the entire damn game, just because of how multi-purpose they are. They have great siege damage. They have absolutely um, efficient, efficient, sufficient, I'd say sufficient damage against infantry and and that is the most important thing they have longer range and also act as culverins so those are just the bomb if you use them right yeah and we see warheads going down to protect the vital infrastructure over here and here yes and that ship's going down Oof, that is some heart damage 100 siege attack there we go good damage there but look at that, what what kind of guys do we have here? Somali, trade route, food, oh god. Well, 30%. <laughs> god. Villagers and fishing boats get a coin faster, so 10%. Oh god, that, that is exactly the shipment that is basically made for the strat of Kinesi. <laughs> frontier fortification, small hot and uh, warship against frontier fortification damage. Oh god, that is... <laughs> Those Somali people are just perfect on that map. Extra all your future shipments deliver an extra fishing boat. Infantry against <laughs> God. Oh, infantry against 10% ranged armor, that means he wins the skirm war if he's on the same level. Outpost <laughs> post of life. Oh god. The, the Somali are basically a meme on this map in my opinion. God, what's this? <laughs> That is amazing. Luke is in age four now. Kinesi also aging up himself, just a bit slow with the warrior. So that gives him two heavy cannons, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, <laughs> God. Uh, you also see the, the wood upgrade from Lucas, and of course, the four cannons first shipment. Absolutely important right here. He also took the entire training route, which I do like. I have to say that it's really good move in my opinion because he has the map basically or he has the mainland at least he needs that kind of control what upgrade are we seeing champion tomahawks so h4 champ h4 tomahawks interesting enough but i think he needs those um if you guys ever saw 
it's a it, it's a long time ago, but there was an ESO cup where Schnitzel, no, not Schnitzel, where Knuschelbeer played against um, Kinesi, if I remember correctly, on and now don't fail me brain on Malaysia, and he just got to H4 and then only played Tomahawks and a whole lot of light cannons against a, a Portuguese player on water and all that. And he managed to quite impressively show how powerful those light cannons just are. It is absolutely amazing if you use them right and if you don't lose them to senseless battles, then those things can really put a punch out. And I'm actually quite fascinated by the fact that Lucas with 53 villages can hold up his own against uh, the, the 70 villages of Lucas by now, but uh, of, of Kinesi of course. And now he's just destroying vital structure. There we go. The upgrade is through as well. Kinesi now building heavy cannons himself and sending on in some more heavy cannons. Lucas on the other side pressing the big button for more tomahawks. Those guys, absolute beast at this point. Oh, absolute beast, maybe a bit um, of an exaggeration, but 225 HP. 10% more, so 250 next to the Explorer. So definitely decent value right there. Luke is also going for more heavy cannons because he just needs that. He really, really needs it. And the problem is that I don't think that he himself has uh, taken on to that. Uh, trading cost and so the technologies in those things, in those uh, native settlements. But I can imagine that this ca could be the deciding game factor. And here we see Lucas just continuing to be aggressive all over the map. Now himself building a dock again, making sure. But Kinesis sees that, right? Yeah, Kinesis sees the dock. And look at that army from Kinesis himself. He now in age four as well. And with all the shipments and the military power right behind it, Kinesis can just push out his big buttons now as well. There we go, second big button, meaning he has quite a considerable army. Lucas does as well, but Lucas has to micro this better because we have more cannons on the side of Kinesi. And see, that was not a good trade for Lucas already. And that one gets caught up. That is just a hard fight to take because those cannons, they also, they, they are rather fast on foot. Just take a quick look. Three speeds. No, no, there's almost no artillery, especially not with that range that can move as fast. They don't have to pack and unpack because that is just one thing. They're just people pushing it around, right? And that means they can actively just sometimes even dodge shots. But the micro game with them is much harder with a cannon. Or not much harder, but more active than with a normal cannon. That is how I would put it. 55 villages for Lucas. Kinesi is on 77, producing out of all, <laughs> all his three TCs. I mean, what kind of eco is that, right? He's just make—he's basically making space so he can even build buildings there, while having a military presence over here. Two siege workshops, actually. And yeah, Lucas needs to watch out here because he really needs to put a fight in now. But how can he force the fight right there? Because he's not really able to get. Oh god, that's a lot of artillery. <laughs> Ooh, shit. The only good thing he has here is that he has huge modifiers on the artillery. With his cavalry, so if he can do if he can do enough damage to the artillery, oh, that was a good shot. And now I think artillery numbers are almost even. He just has to make the best of it. Yeah, good one here. Ah, uh, don't push, don't hit the infantry, hit the artillery. That is so important, right there. Come on. Ah. Oh god. So two can surviving for Lucas. Um, Point-wise, that was a disaster for Lucas, of course, because he just had much more army i think i think in value at least because he had a lot of riders uh, a lot of infantry and a lot of carniers as well but i do think oh that is a good play from lucas at that point lucas also 83 now looking to kind of get up his army count and he needs more military units he needs more military buildings or at least he needs to produce more because what we see right here is a full blast Kinesi water eco <laughs> and it's going crazy look at that he even got that upgrade through that means his ships are going to be gathering yeah 0.9 that is better than any of the villages can do now without the decent upgrades at least Kinesi also getting cavalry upgrades on elite Kanya and he's just looking to push those uh, field cannons 
Oh no. Red mask being a kind of a distraction. Oh, and there go down two cannons. Oh god, that was a good shot. Also putting down the infantry. He has that shotgun shot that improves with the AA jobs. And at some point it's just basically not even a, a, a falcon anymore, but a really heavy gun. <laughs> a really heavy artillery piece. His shotgun, yeah. Makes no sense, but he's a super fun mechanic to play with. So if you ever play Holden Shawnee, always utilize your explorer to the fullest. Alright, guys. Can you see? Look at that production. Cannon here. Double cavalry. And that might be really problematic here for Lucas. Good that he saw it. He needs to move now because he can't deal with all that infantry. Uh, with all that cavalry. And he needs to melee that. Otherwise, that fight... Oh, yeah. No, that fight is... is oh, God. That is a slaughter. And now we have... A superior mass of tomahawks. A superior mass of cannons. And just superior military population. Over... The all over the place uh, for for Kinesi and Lucas he stacks over 2,000 resources I don't know if he's at any point able to, to get back here because that was just a, a absolute cleanup from the side of Kinesi so well done he, he just he, he was pushed off he was entirely basically pushed off the mainland he <laughs> rebuilt his base over here <laughs> and over here and now almost done with the fish already on the entire map so yeah all right but still um what a game that is why i wanted to cast it again because i remember that was a good game and that i was absolutely surprised by the ending but i hope you guys enjoyed it as well i hope you guys enjoyed the well random English cast again <laughs> and what can I say I mean that was just look, look at that right here more military but much worse exchange rate right there and let's look at that big fight military unit population look at that Lucas attacking finishing Kinesi or not finishing but really damaging Kinesi so the push was extremely well thought out that was rather well done and Lucas continued to push to delete infrastructure if you look at buildings. Yeah, you see that? Down, down, down. It, it, I know it stays the same, but that is because Kinesi always rebuilt and had to rebuild. So his better eco always went into new buildings and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, military unit count. There we go. The big fight at the end. Lucas did not even have more military. All right. Damn it. <laughs> But yeah, that fight was already not good because he couldn't remass the same way that Kinesi could, and Kinesi was just all over his, uh, all over his army when when those Kanya popped. That was a strong pop, and that forced Lucas into the engagement. Lucas should have gone, tried to go back to some extent, but when you have that little army and those and that much cannons to protect, then what what else do you do, right? And yeah, villager population. Look at that. But also Kinesi going up there. All resources gathered. I, I, yeah, we see it, right? Lucas, for the longest time, was ahead because uh, Kinesi's eco was just not that good. But Kinesi managed to put out just so many villages and so much eco. And from his point of view, that was not able to, to see. Uh, from point of view. I would have not... I, I did not see Kinesi coming back from this. Not like this. Not not with that kind of, of uh, strategy. I don't know if he planned for this because he was rather greedy. But holy hell, what a game. I hope you guys enjoyed it so far. I certainly did. Um, as I said, this is going to be an extra video. So don't expect this to come out on a Monday, Wednesday or, or Saturday as it's usually done with my videos. This is going to be some, some other time. And my other English casts are probably... I, I thought about, you know, naming it a Freaky Friday idea. So at some Fridays I might upload something in English as well. Just for my own fun, <laughs> I say. But yeah, what, what a game between those two top players. And really good gameplay from both sides. Absolutely amazing to watch, in my opinion. So, that's it so far, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this with me as well. And see you in the next video. Bye.